Welcome back to my channel, my friend. My name is Petula, your host here at All Things Agile. And today we are going to be looking into five steps for you to lead agile change, even when you're not the person with influence in your organization. And this is prompted by a question that I get very often. It's usually a question along the lines of, how do we create change in the organization when I don't have power? Now, you can't really change the whole organization when you don't have power, but you can institute some level of change in whatever level of influence that you have. And this is what we are going to be looking to today. So the first step is start from the beginning, or how I like to say, start with the end in mind. What is the compelling reason for the change? What is the impact? What is the gain? And it is possible that you're just like a natural early adopter. You are one of those people that just want change for the sake of change, or that you just think there are better ways of doing things. Now, bear in mind, not everybody is like that. It's good if you are like that, go for it. But as you're trying to have people embark on the journey of change with you, just remember that people have very different reasons for doing things the way they've always done or for executing any level of change. So don't judge them too harshly. Try and understand the circumstances where they are coming from. This is going to make it easier for you to conduct change. Change will definitely start with empathy towards the people who will be on the receiving end of that change. Then the second step would be find a sponsor if you can, especially if you need tools, if you need resources, you will need somebody who can pay for that kind of stuff. In general, sponsors are a great person for you to attract attention. They are usually someone who are some level above you in the hierarchy. They can grant you some sort of exposure. They can create excitement outside of your space and of your team so that other people are also looking at the change that you are creating. Now remember, as you're recruiting a sponsor, what's in it for them? So try and think a little bit beforehand and make sure to have a conversation with them so that they understand that they are not just doing that to help you out of the goodness of their heart, which is great and they can do, but most people have a limited amount of time and resources. So if they're gonna be helping you with whatever change you want, what is it that they gain? And this is true if you just want to adopt, let's say Scrum, because you feel like your team will be more efficient. How how do you plan on sharing the, all that new effectiveness and the learnings with the sponsor? Are you going to be helping their team of doing similar changes or maybe whatever happened now for your team that you were so much more effective, you can deliver things so much faster and in better quality that they now need to wait less time for whatever is it that they usually wait for, all that kind of thing. So really think about the first step the compelling reason that you have, what are the gains, try to find a space in there for your sponsor. Number three is very simple, go by affinity. So in step one, you found your why, a compelling reason. And then number two, you found that sponsor, someone to back you up, to support you. So now it's time to identify who is going to go along in the journey with you. Change is really hard. I'm pretty sure I don't need to tell you that. So even when you are excited, when you're willing to go for change, you are already going to face so many challenges. So make your life easier by not trying to deal with conflict and try to convince people to do something that they are not really that interested. So for example, your team doing Scrum. If maybe that is not a framework that everybody is really interested in and you're not being able to sell all the points in there, but let's say maybe you found interesting saying that you could have a daily huddle. You know, let's meet up every day to check in and see if we are on track with our tasks and our projects. Or it could be, let's have something that looks like a review at the end of every week. We come together and see what is it that we have accomplished and have some of our stakeholders coming in. Find that one thing that you can pick from the change that everybody could be willing to do and be excited about so that you don't have to deal with the scent this early in the stage. Remember, in this context, you don't have much power or influence. So the best influence you can have is people's own willingness to join forces with you. So number four, I've seen so many seasoned even change makers get off track here in this one. And hopefully if you've done step one, two, and three, 
properly, right now you have a lot of momentum going on for you. So follow through is extremely important. Don't get discouraged. Don't get bored. Really, whatever it is that you're doing, it's a new tool, it's a new process. Just keep trying and keep learning and keep using it and go through the discomfort of things. Don't just abandon whatever that is that you know you were so excited about and now all of a sudden it seems so unimportant so that is why go back a little bit once more if the reason your why was really compelling and now you have a sponsor that you are accountable to it's not just you now someone else is really looking at you and say huh I really want to see what is it that you can achieve through that. And you have a group of people just as excited because you're going by affinity. You're not swimming against the current with a position. So you should be in a great place to really continue and check in with the change. And basically, a change will eventually become the natural thing, the new normal, the thing that you now do as a common practice. And the final one would be measure right measure the right thing, the right time, the right way. And what I mean by that is if you're having that follow through going on and you're measuring, you now give yourself the ability to do the things that we love most in Agile, the two famous words. So you either persevere, you continue doing what is that you thought was the right thing to do and it's working. Your measurements are saying that it's working or you pivot, you quickly change direction and then you try something new. So it's not that you just abandon things, you notice patterns, you notice results, and you say, mm, it's not really working, let's try something else. So that's the difference between plainly abandoning and pivoting. Now, on the topic of measuring, one of the things that I would like to say is, not many people think about the pace of measure. They think about like, what are the numbers you should look into and which tool do you use to collect that data? But when is it the right time to collect information? So if you wanted to see if you're just becoming more efficient at doing your tasks, if you're probably measuring every day, you don't really see much of a change. But maybe if you are measuring every couple of weeks or maybe even every week, you notice that the volume of work, you know, it's progressing at a faster pace. So be mindful of that. Sometimes you measure too much and too soon. You lose the ability to see trends, to see performance over time. So usually whatever it is that you're measuring every single day, probably every single day wouldn't be the better pace for you. But it really depends on the change that you put in place. So just keep that in mind. Think about the right pace for measuring the changes that you want to see happening. So there you have, my friend, five steps to create agile change. Even if you're not the person who is in charge or in power or whatever words of influence you want to use in here. I hope this video resonated with you. I hope it gave you an idea on how you can go about creating some of the change that you want to see happening in your workplace. And remember, if it's something that only depends on you, it's going to be even easier. But usually it depends on other people in the context of organization. So maybe share this video with some of your colleagues and then have a discussion to see, well, what do we do now then? I would love to know about that. So leave a comment if this resonated with you. If you have any other insights, I'd love to know. Make sure to follow me and all things Agile in all the social channels of your preference. And if you're not subscribed yet and you like the kind of content that you see here, consider subscribing so that you then are notified and then you don't miss anything whenever I put a video out there for you. As for this video, I'll end here and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.